Hello everyone and welcome back to Mixbus TV Mixing and Mastering Tutorials on YouTube. I'm your host David and we are back with mixing tutorials. Hope you guys are happy. Today I'm gonna use this mix that I did not long ago for this artist called Leon. I mixed the whole album and it should be about to be released soon. Before we start, please subscribe and hit the bell icon down below or you will not get notifications for new videos. Thank YouTube. And let me remind you that we now have a Mixbus TV store with t-shirt mugs, hoodies and gadgets. If our videos are helping you in any way and you want to support the channel, please visit the store. But let's get to the video. This is an interesting track, a very composed, mixed and classy, I would call it. It's an auto pop song with a lot of different instruments, very good arrangement that make it sound like there is not much going on there, but there is electronic drums, a lot of electric pianos, different synth basses, pads, but the driving element in this mix, aside from the vocals, were the guitars. And these were real guitars. We have both acoustic and electric guitars, multiple tracks of them. And the sounds I was given were good to begin with. My challenge here was to blend them in. They are quite a few without making them step on each other and on the vocals, on the lead vocals. So stereo and 3D positioning is what I work the most with these guitars, to make the mix wide and give it depth, but to keep the feeling minimalistic somehow, while still making sure the guitars, especially the acoustic ones, were still the driving element. See where I'm going with this? It wasn't just a matter of panning them somewhere. I had to be careful with what I kept mono, what I kept stereo, for the mono to not to lose the power but not to have him step on the lead vocals and for the stereo ones, not only how wide they were but also not necessarily always all the way to the sides. And that's just panning. I needed to place them in front and back 3D space to give the mix space and depth. And we will see I used a mix of EQ, delays and reverbs to do that. So let's take a listen to the finished mix first, then we'll look at the guitars in detail. Lo presto lo saprò, una forza mi attrae, un magnete colossale che mi tira verso di te. Ora sono qui vicino, bevo un sesso dal bicchiere, poi ti chiedo se ne vuoi. So without going into too much detail, an overview of the tracks, the green one are the drums, uh, red are the synth basses, then all the colored pink, bluish are pads, and then we have the electric guitars here, three of them, and then more guitars here, the lead guitar for the bridge, and then the acoustic guitars, all these brown ones. These are the main driving element, pretty much. So let's start with the acoustic guitars. Let's see how they are bussed, how they are routed, and what we have stereo and what we have mono and the tracks themselves. We have for the main guitar an acoustic DI, which is mono. Then of the same take, we have a stereo microphone on this guitar, panned left, right. Then we have another take here for the last two choruses, another stereo take of the acoustic guitar. Then we have an additional acoustic mono riff, and then we have two arpeggios, 
playing two different parts, steel mono one and two, and these are all real guitars. So they all are bust, these brown tracks to the clean guitars output bus, which is then routed to my mix bus. So let's start by playing only the acoustic DI and we'll bypass everything here. I can bypass the EQ on the SSL and I'll leave it just for gain staging, even though I didn't touch it. But this is the acoustic guitar as is. <laughs> As you can see, I reshaped the low end basically. I cut the sub bass with the filter and then I boosted this range here around 300, which is uncommon um, if you think about it. But hear how much warmer it sounds. <laughs> So now the order in which I processed each single track and or the, the output bus, I don't remember. But let's take a look at single tracks first. Stereo microphone. See, I'm cutting something here in the same range where I boosted the mono one, the DI one, and I'm not doing anything else on the SSL. This is how it sounds without anything. <laughs> Okay, so the first processing really is the stereo with plugin uh, stock Pro Tools. As you can see, I made this track wider, but I kept the lows at 0% because I didn't want to widen that low range for obvious reasons, which is phase. But here's how it sounds without and with. <laughs> Okay, kind of subtle, but it makes a difference. Then let's take a look at what's on the output bus. Just a filter on the SSL. Again, reshaping the low end just with simple EQ. You can see this note here, if we open up. Okay, so that's a cut when you can see the player hits that note was resonating everything else is cleaning up then we have the tdr nova this i wanted to show you because this is basically how i controlled that peak there then you can see it moves around because the fundamental note it hits it's different every time so what I needed to do, I needed to control those peaks dynamically when he hits different notes. And this is a static EQ, so I needed a dynamic EQ. I did it with the Nova. You see how precise it is? What I do is I take the uh, Pro Q and I use the MIDI keyboard to spot the exact frequency of the note he plays, and then I transfer it to, I type it here in the frequency box on the Nova. And we see 110, we talked about this in past videos on acoustic instruments, on acoustic guitars, uh, specifically on bass, 110, the A note is usually very resonant. So this is, let me bypass the other two, three. See? It basically reduces the level of that range when he hits that note. Then the second one is a Y03. There you go. And then we have 87. So each one is independently controlled, each note. I know this is very detailed, but the vocals is singing on top of the guitar and those frequencies 
uh, at the low, mid-low range, could stomp on the lead vocals, and we need to control it. And this was a real guitar, so it's dynamic. Then we have a limiter. L1, just for safety, and probably is gonna only work here. Yeah, here when, when all the three guitars, four guitars are playing. Yeah, we'll get there. But uh, yeah, it's probably just to tame peaks of this performance here. But let's go on with the first two on the guitar output bus. We have a vintage verb just to give an overall space to these guitars which were very dry despite the the stereo microphone this makes a big difference as you can see i used the large ambience algorithm so i didn't want a reverb i wanted a space i kept the mix low you can see the settings the dk low I just wanted air around these guitars. Next one is the CLA 76, which again is probably only working when all the four guitars are playing, but let's see. It's actually working. Without. There's definitely increasing level, but what you can hear is obviously there's more detail um, when he when he touches the strings in the sustain, especially probably here in that part when he leaves the notes playing. Without. Hear how without the compression they fall really quickly, they, they don't have that much sustain. So it helps giving density to the guitars. Then a simple EQ, VQ4, for a little bit of high end, uh, a little boost of 7K and 15K without it. Um, with EQ plugins, uh, a little goes a long way. Uh, this plugin, for example, if you push it too hard, I, I usually don't like the high-end boost, but keep it conservative and they work very well. This, this one is a big difference. It just hits that high note very, very well. So then after that, a de -esser which you know me, I use them on, on guitars very often. You can see it's controlling, yes, a couple of those high notes, but mostly is controlling the finger squeaking. You see, that's where it goes up to eight to 10 dB of gain reduction. Let's try to hear just the side chain. It, the frequency is set around 2000, as you can see. There. It's pretty, it's pretty normal, pretty obvious what it does. But yeah, I use the de to contain the finger squeaking. And then the stock Pro Tools compressor, as you can see, is sidechained to the lead vocals. So the lead vocals, when, when the singer sings, this compressor ducks the level of the guitars. You're not going to hear much of a difference in this case, but if I put the vocal... La noia mi assale, vorrei solo più scampare a casa a volte, odio i weekend. Okay, again, I played with the stereo image, I played with level, I controlled dynamically those notes 
uh, low notes that were stomping on the vocal, on the lead vocal. But then I also needed to the mono guitar especially to get out of the way when the vocals were singing. And I'm not doing much. A couple of dB of gain reduction is enough for the vocal to be right one step on top of the guitars, which are still present, mono, and strong in the song. Then this clean guitar output bus goes to my clean guitar verb, and I need to activate both of these sends and show you because the reverb is sidechained to the dry signal. So if we open up the reverb, it sounds like this. Without. So you see the difference between the vintage verb that is just giving us the ambience, a space where the guitars are playing, and this one, uh, which is actually giving us reverb, okay? But what I wanted to show you is the EQ that comes after. So we are completely cutting out almost all that boomy range which is on the dry signal, which we controlled with the Nova and everything. And we are band limiting the signal coming out of the reverb. Okay, so I wanted all the frequencies to excite the reverb, but I didn't want them in the return. Makes sense. But the thing that I wanted to show you is this, another stock Pro Tools compressor that is side-chained to the dry signal. You can see here this clean guitars bus goes to the reverb and then goes to the acoustic guitars sidechain which is the input on this compressor basically what we are doing here is when the guitars play this compressor is ducking the reverb signal and is is reducing the level quite a lot as you can see about to 10 12 db and letting it go so let the tail of the reverb coming up in between notes let's hear it without first with hear the difference we worked so much to get all that that finger detail uh, uh really pretty and controlled and all the notes heard perfectly and now without the compressor, the reverb is washing them out. And we don't want that. We want to keep this guitar intimate, up in our face. This does the trick. It gives us the tail of the reverb. And this kind of feeling to, to keep the guitar up front and somehow, I wouldn't say dry, but just close to us. It fits the mix, in my opinion, if we take a listen. See what I'm trying to do? There are elements that are up in our face and then they move away and then they come back up. And this is not just the guitar, the synths do that too. Uh, with the vocal being right in your face, really warm as a reference point. But we are just about here where we have these two more performances. So let's take a listen to them. And this other one. So together sound like this. There were two mono tracks, now I panned left and right. But the thing to pay attention here is where in the space. And I was given the sounds pretty much as they are. Let me let me bypass things that I have on them. So there was already the delay and reverb on him.
just a little bit of compression on this one to enhance actually the peaks, the, the transients. Okay, it's pumping a little bit. That's what I wanted. Uh, so I wanted to create a little more movement. The next one has a lot more stuff on it. Filters. And you can see from the waveform, it has this tall peaks at the beginning of each note, which are probably controlled by this one. Just 1 to 2 dB on the last two, but still it helps us with gaining headroom. Then there's the next effects, which is the vintage filter. I use this just for the fat mode. It just adds a little bit of grit. And the phaser. So the left guitar is steady, this one is modulating. Again, it fits with the song and together they sound like this. The result is even if the uh, left guitar has delays and reverbs, it feels a lot closer to us. Because the phaser makes this one spacey and somehow farther away. The last is the limiter, still controlling. Just in case. Then we have this other performance here, which should be at the second verse when the snare actually comes in because we have three choruses. In the first chorus, there's no snare. The second and the third, there's the snare and we have this additional acoustic guitar. Let's take a listen to it. Okay, so we have SSL again with just the filters and again scooping out that 250 range a little bit. And then the Saturn, because the first thing that I noticed on this guitar was that the peaks, you see, there's a lot of difference between the meat of the guitar and the, the high, tall peaks. So the first thing I wanted to do, I wanted to try to tame them with um, saturation because I liked the sound. I didn't like that they were eating so much headroom. So the first thing I tried to do was this, was enhance the sound itself with saturation so that we perceived it at the same level and hopefully to tame some of those peaks with saturation. Without... Well, let me bypass everything actually. So you hear the difference in sound, but if you take a look at the peak levels, you can see that without the saturator on, they go higher. If we put the saturation on, we gain here and there a couple of dB or something. The controlling peak wasn't really what I was after. If that was going to be a byproduct of the saturation of enhancing the sound, good. If not, it wasn't a problem. Then I had on these guitars my hardware, um, API 2500, which I don't have, so I just put the plug-in in. And uh, yeah, let's deal with this. It worked something like this, um, medium attack, eating up a couple of dBs just for the sound of the API. One thing to notice, this, this guitar is stereo, obviously, and I kept the LR 
independent so the two channels are not linked and that keeps the stereo image very wide even when compressing even enhancing it a little bit I could have done things to this to this guitar really but my train of thought was really i can use another mono element for the second part of the chorus the the idea the arrangement was to make this part the second part of the chorus a little more powerful and to me power is mono so i kept this pretty much as is i didn't do anything to it but it's still going to the clean guitar output bus so it's still getting all this treatment here so without and then we had this guitar which is stereo so it made sense to keep it mono and also is a very good complement to the other mono track which is kind of dark and, and, and low-endy. So this is it for the acoustic guitars. In the next episode, we are going to take a look at the electric guitars for this, for this track. And that's a wrap. This is it for this video, I guess. If you like the video, please don't forget to click the like button. If you have any question, leave your comment down below or post in the new community page here on YouTube. That's the best place to post your questions to which I will answer in vlogs, Q&As or videos. Questions about this specific mix or anything else. Stay tuned for the next episode. Join us on Facebook and Twitter and get all the news about the channel, upcoming videos and series and access to exclusive content. Please keep supporting Mixbus TV by visiting the store, sharing the videos and spreading the word on blogs, forums, social media. Subscribe, click the bell icon if you haven't already and see you next time.